Good day, dear friends. How are you doing? Okay. So if you're seeing this video for the first time, please take your time to subscribe to my channel and all those my friends who are with me for quite some time. Thank you. Thank you for being with me. And I really like to come in front of you uh, to give me some of the tidbits I can share with you. Now this, I'm saying this as an introduction uh, because my videos are aimed basically at two groups of individuals. One are the medical students uh, who are preparing for the exams, uh, NEET PGs and also MCQs, MRCS exams. Uh, and the other group of individuals for which my uh, this channel is directed to are normal people who want to know about their own health uh, conditions, okay, male health issues. Now, today, my uh, topic of discussion will be acute scrotal pain. And I can tell you, this is basically, this presentation is basically intended for medical students who are sitting for the exams, okay. So, it's basically, as a rec exam reckoner or to brush up their uh, past uh, uh, the th theoretical stuff they had gone through. But again, this is also very important for our uh, members of the main he male health online group, okay, which we have. Uh, many of you have joined me. Thank you very much for being with me because acute scrotal pain is a very important problem plaguing our society, especially young individuals, male individuals, okay. Young male individuals in their 20s, 25s, 16 young adolescents, they don't understand what is an acute scrotal pain and they often tend to neglect. Testicular torsion is often gets missed by this problem because of lack of awareness. So please go through the video, even if you are not a medical student, even if you are in my community, uh, being a subscriber of my channel, thank you very much. My best wishes with you. But again, be aware of this condition. Okay. That's what I wanted to tell you. Now, let me. Uh, Okay, let me uh, start this presentation. Okay, fine. Right, okay. So, whether I'm able to... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes. Okay, okay. Now, now as you can understand, is uh, this is the normal picture. This is the picture. And I can, uh, wait a minute, I can understand whether, uh, whether or not whether or not I'm able to, or oh, this thing. Uh, let me share the screen. It's not been shared actually. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for the delay. It was not shared. Right. Thank you. Now it's been shared. Now, as you can understand, this is the presentation I'm going to tell you is that the acute scrotum. And uh, this is the, uh, the anatomical part. This is for our medical students. As you can understand, this is the testis. This is the epididymis, okay? Because the testis will have the transport, will produce a, a, basically the spermatozoa. The spermatozoa will have to need to be stored at some place, okay? This is the epididymis, which is on the posterior lateral aspect of the testis. And then there is a vas, which takes it to the ejaculators. Now, then this is the, the veins of the testis, which form a pampiniform plexus, which often gets dilated abnormally in a varicose. Uh, as you can understand, when there's a varicose, the veins get dilated, the weight of the scrotum is increased and the patient will have chronic archaeology, but not acute scrotal pain. Then there are arteries and there are nerves, the genital, genital branch, the genital femoral nerve, and the testicular arteries. So if there's an inflammation of the testis, inflammation of the epididymis, or there is anything which, which have an effect on the testicular blood supply, suppose the testis to rotate on itself, there will be twisting of these structures, the cord structures, and the, the arteries because they are part of the part of these uh, cord structures. They will also become occluded by the twisting, and it will cause decreased blood supply and increased pain. Try to understand. Okay, so this is the contents. As I said testicular artery, genital branch, genital femoral nerve. These are very important when we talked about the acute pain in a testicular torsion. So normally the testes are in the vertical position. What is the cremastric reflex? This is a very important question which we have in our exam. Is like stroking or pinching the inner thigh will activate the L1 division, L1, L2 division of the iliuinginal nerve and the genital branch uh, and the, and the, and the uh, femoral branch of the genital femoral nerve. These nerves, the sensory fibers will go to L1, L2 receptors at the spinal cord level and then they will send motor fibers. 
and activate the cremastric muscle. The cremastric muscle is very well developed in young child, in young adults, adolescents, but with time it just goes off. Okay, so the cremastric reflex is very well seen in young child and a young adult. Okay, what really happens is contraction of the cremastric muscle and because of the contraction of cremastric and the cremaster basically, it, it's a spiral mechanism of insheating the cord structures. So whenever it contracts, whenever this activated contracts, it actually pulls the testis to a very dependent position on the external inguinal vein. Like if the if it's like a fight or flight uh, situation, whenever somebody, um, whenever you're stroking means, uh, in, in fact, if you have a sexual excitement, that also means the testis must be brought to a natural, to a very comfortable position. So you will not get hit by any force or something, even there's a temperature change. The testes get shrink and go up. They go up. Okay, there's often chance that go up. So this is a cremastric reflex. Now suppose, suppose, why is cremastric reflex lost in acute testicular torsion? One of the most important reason is whenever there's testicular torsion, as I as I has uh, as I will be seeing you, I will telling you in this picture. Okay, where is the picture gone? By the way, yeah. As you can understand, that the test is actually it gets rotated. Amount around the axis, which is basically what is it's, it's a spermatic cord, and with the spermatic cord, the outer the outer layer of the spermatic cord is actually the cremastric muscle. The cremastric muscle is actually getting torted and goes into spasm, and basically maximally contracted. So there is no further contraction by eliciting the cremastric reflex. Hence, cremastric reflex is negative in this case. Understand. So there's no further contraction and there's no further dry, I mean, pulling the testis more medially towards the external angular, towards the angular. Okay, this is the uh, cremastic reflex. Now, what is the phrase sign? These are the two clinical signs we'll have to tell your examiner in your emergency Bible table. Friend sign is whenever a person comes, when a young child comes with a acute testicular pain, you try to elevate the test. Now, this is very painful for acute testicular torsion, holding the testis. Touching the testis actually elicits a lot of pain. But if you raise the testis a bit slightly, then the pain diminishes if it is a case of acute epididymorchitis. Because in those cases, that there's a venous congestion. If you raise the venous, there's a, a bit of decongestion, and the, most of the pain is due to congestion. So it goes off. So, frame sign, when you raise the testis, pain goes off positive. Is actually means that the patient is having acute epididymal orchitis. Friend sign is not relieved, negative, then the patient is having acute testicular torsion. Okay. But it's again, it's said not a reliable thing you do in fancily. It's a basically fancy test you do it in the emergency room. Torsion test is basically has two components. One is intravaginal, which is the 95% of the testicular torsions, where the testis, the it dots, it goes around on an axis made by the smartic cord and within the tunica vaginis. Think when the tunica vaginis are not very well developed, not fully covering the testis and the epididymis and the cord structures, it's still rudimentary. Also, the testis is not fixed with the gubernaculum. That is, the, the tunica vaginis has no role with the gubernaculum, has not developed well. The testis is big. Because the child is big. So this is more in high birth weight in by high birth weight units. And the coverings are very rudimentary. Then the, there's a high chance that the testis will get torted because of the sheer weight of the testis. Sheer weight of the testis. Okay. This happens when there is a testicular tumor. No? Chance of tumor getting torted is very high because of the sheer weight of the testis. But again, the Tunica vaginalis have not developed. This is what is known as the extra vaginal torsion. 5% cases happens in utero or happens right after birth. And these are non salvageable cases, mostly. Okay, so this is our extra vaginal torsion, and this is what we are talking about is intra vaginal torsion. This is a urologic emergency. You have to have to take charge of the patient immediately, have to evaluate, and you think. Testicular torsion, you have to take the patient to the option to right away because there's something known as the six hour golden rule. From the onset of symptoms, 
not from the patient comes to operation to a emergency treatment. Onset of symptoms at four o'clock, patient comes at eight o'clock, you have still two hours to control the situation. Okay, so that's very important. Within six hours, the high chance of testicular salvageability. Beyond six hours, the salvage chance is lost. Okay, so most of them that occurs in the adolescence, but again, 40 to 50 years, they can happen, they're rare. Most common is acute testicular pain early in the night, early in the morning, okay? And on physical exam, you see the testicle has swollen, scrotum has swollen, there's erythema, absence, schematic reflex, and a horizontal line. But basically, because of this torsion, the testis become, instead of vertical, becomes a horizontal. So, very important, very important, my dear friends, especially in children, they will have 90% or 96% predictive sign, it's called predictive, positive predictive value that the patient will have acute nausea and vomiting. So for testicular pain, child, young adult comes with acute nausea and vomiting. Think about testicular torsion only, but if it's not a testicular torsion, as you can understand, we don't done a Doppler ultrasound, color Doppler ultrasound, then think of whether you're dealing with the right uh, I mean, ipsilateral ureterovesical junction calculus or not. These patients also have similar effect. Ureteric colic and the pain is referred to the scrotum. Acute pain. So don't forget this thing. Okay. Patients having uh, rarely report voiding difficulties or painful urination and fever is rare and acute torsion. Some patients, 90 degree torsion, detorted, have episodes of recurrent acute scrotal pain in the past, resolve spontaneously. Okay. And these are known as intermittent torsion and detorsion. Then person, even if it comes and he says, I have this problem three times before. Now we're seeing you, you are like a god. My testes have detorted. And I want to go home. Also, Dr. Sub, you also go home. No. You said no. You have to get admitted. I, I do a ultrasound scrotum scene. I can just have to check that it uh, has been detorted spontaneously. Even then, I will operate on you to do a deto this uh, opidopexy because there's a high chance, 10% chance that you require, again, have an acute torsion in the near future. This is very important. These are the few pictures of how torsion looks like. This is obviously in Western uh, uh, literature, obviously well, these are taken from the internet and shows Western uh, patients actually because they have fair skin. So the redness is not well seen in our Indian population because of scrotum is often, they are uh, dark skin. So there's hyperemia, redness, transverse lie, high riding. This is the high riding. Uh, is a, the test is being pulled up, high riding test is. And the, this is a normal left test, so this is an abnormal right test. Is. Okay. So this is a very important sign. Then you do a cremastric reflex, then you do a friend sign. I say this is intervaginal test is 95%, 5% extravaginal test. Intervaginal torsion, twisting, we have talked about. And this is very important is a bell clap. What is a bell clap? Bell clap is something like this the ghanti, which normally used. This is the tunica vaginalis. And here, you can understand, normally tunica vaginalis is the postural aspect, well seen, the anterior aspect is free, but the postural lateral aspect is well fixed. This is the epidynamis. But when there is a high insertion of this tunica vaginalis, the posterior wall is free, the anterior wall is free, the testis tends to rotate. Twist, twist. This is the testis, analogous, and this is the bell, the clapper is a testis, and this bell is actually the tunica vaginalis. It's called a bell clapper. Okay. And not probably high attachment or tunica vaginalis. Abnormal fixation, the fascial coverings. Freely rotates. 90 degree rotation, detorted. 180 degree rotation, venous occlusion. More than 180 degree, the arterial occlusion. And all these gangrenous changes if it goes beyond six hours. Okay. So the long axis becomes a transverse axis, as, it, as very well shown on this picture. Okay. Now, most of these cases are bilateral. Though the other is not have not been dotted right now, but it will get dotted in the near future. So whenever you operate the patients, you operate bilateral. Even though the uh, you will have a torsion of one side, very common, okay? Because the parents will tell you, okay, you are touching the balls of my child because uh, he is having a right sided ball defect. While operate or while are operating on the left side, tell them. Most of the most of the bell clapper deformities and the other test is also going to be undergoing torsion in no time. So we have to go for a bilateral optometrics. Okay, right. So this is basically the torsion. All, all these torsion uh, seven have to go seven to eight degrees. It takes time. Six hours gone. The salvage will be lost. Okay, it's all lost beyond twenty four hours. 
okay necrosis develops gangrene develops right and um, so this is our extravagant torsion you have talked about it and this i said is very rare and bilateral is very rare in extravagant torsions and they all present with a form hard scrotal mass okay right so this thing is six hour rule very important very important beyond six hours chances are very low 50 percent will have salvageability 50 percent will have non-salvageability we will try our best to save blood test but you have to take it in account you have to counsel the patient accordingly now this now the next step you want to do the best thing the, the, the diagnosis of choice obviously is a color doppler with power settings it's called ultrasound of the scrotum normal ultrasound of the scrotum grayscale no value will never able to differentiate between a testicular torsion and acute epidemic movement. You have to get power Doppler settings, at least color Doppler settings. What we are going to see? Decreased blood flow, decreased flow velocity in the testicular arteries, increased resistive indexes, and a low resistance flow pattern. Okay. So you see this power color Doppler is absence of the signals, absence of the signals. Testicular torsion, very important in this case. You have to go for orchidopexy, even though it's not a guarantee in future torsion, it still can uh, go to torsion, but it does reduce also future torsion. Same thing if you're operating, because we're operating on the other side as well. But this is very important over time elapse. 100% salivage rate if it's below, it is below the six hours rule. That is six hours from the present from the presentation of the pain, not from the presentation of the patient as your emergency department. Very important, very important. 24 hours, that's the percent Consequences in testes get infected and you lose the testes. Not only that, there will be generation of an autoimmune mechanism, formation of anti-testicular antibodies, anti-sperm antibodies to be, the term is anti-sperm antibodies. And there is a, something called the blood testis barrier on the other side, the normal side. Okay. And because of this anti-sperm antibodies goes beyond the blood testis barrier is disrupted. So the spermatogenesis is, is, is disrupted in the other normal testis. So one test is gone. Spermatogen has gone in the right testis. The left test is still jinda, but with the autoimmune mechanisms, the patient will have infertility. So always, always take a consent. Even though you're operating the patient beyond six hours, high chance of autoimmune mechanism, take a consent. Even if you're operating the patient with a good intent, try to salvage the testis, but there's high chance of infertility as well in the future. Okay. Differential diagnosis, obviously, it's a differential diagnosis we talk about as we go along. And there are centers which do not have, it's a primary health care center. So suppose you are working in a primary health center. Okay. You have to charge your patients. And the next center, the highest center with the power Doppler, color Doppler settings is say about uh, uh, 20 kilometers away. You do this twist score. What is twist score? To take a uh, testicular swelling, heart test is the firmness of the test is, Absent cremastering reflex, nausea, vomiting, high radiant test. Put up points, stratify. Lesser points, low risk. Send the patient to higher center. Intermediate, tell them, go immediately to the higher center. Immediate, this is urgent. If you can't go, I will operate on you. High risk group, I will operate on you because you will lose time when you go over there. Chance of salvage between lost. If you have to travel 50, 60 kilometers when there is no good proper transport, this is how you can tire your patient. Where to go? Any role about blood biochemistry? No role. No role. Somebody says that acute epidemic market will have pyuria. So it will have a increased blood uh, total count. Okay. Now, very difficult because you have seen that 60% of patients of torsion will have an increased WBC count. But the most important thing for MCQs as well is the mean plated volume which has been suggested to be a diagnostic and prognostic information for testicular torsion. Now there's elevation of the acute phase proteins like CRP and ESR in inflammatory states or like epididymalkite, acute epididymalkite is vis-a-vis testicular torsion. Now these are newer studies, theoretical stuff, non-dynamic contrast enhanced MRI scrotum, important. Diagnosis equivocal, then you send the patient to a heart center with having a radionuclear scan of the testis. 100% accuracy. They will tell you whether the blood supply is present or not. Even though the color, power, Doppler all says wishy washy equivocal, you are, you are confused, the is confused, the patient is confused, the parents are confused. It's the best way to reduce all confusion. And there's also a very super theoretical stuff like a near infrared spectroscopy, which will give you the results in 20 seconds, okay, as quickly as that. 
but I've never seen this. I've just read it in the papers. Now, the operating details, very important. They will ask you in the operating details of how we do we approach a case of testicular torsion. Patient has brought to you, have taken all these concerns. Whenever you touch a patient with testicular torsion, even though it's below six hours, because you don't know for sure how long. The patient may, may say six hours, less than six hours, but it has been having this pain for beyond that. He may be sleeping at that time. Okay. Always take the consent of orchidectomy before you touch the gunas. As I talked about infertility and all these things, infection, all this also happens. Always take the consent of orchidectomy. Make a midline incision. You, have, you can approach both sides in a single incision. Enter the uh, compartment. Take out the testes after you incise tunica vaginalis. Place it on your uh, lapotomy pad or uh, whatever and put it on a lot hot, hot sponges. Try your best to save the testes. Increase the SpO2 levels. Ask the anesthetist to increase the SpO2 levels. Warm sponges. Take some time. Okay. And see, look for the signs of harbor testes after detorsion. You, de you also do a detorsion, obviously. Look at after detorsion. There's a change of color, return of your also have an intraoperative Doppler ultrasound, return of Doppler color, and you nick on the incise. Make an incise unique albuginia where you see an arterial spot or not. So very important signs that you are successful in salvaging the testis. If the testis is necrotic, the game is over, you have to cut the testis. Because ultimately, they will tell you, okay, let the testes remain. I will have a cosmetic assurance that I have both the testes. No, because it will have potential subfertility and also have potential for sepsis, generalized sepsis, because of the abscess formation. Okay, and before you go out, always fix the other tests. It's very important. Don't forget to tell this in your examination. Always I will try to fix the other tests before I leave. Okay, so always perform a contract lock into fix. Now, this is the picture. This is you have to detour the testes, put up moist hot pads, and see the salvageability. But this, I don't think, is going to be salvaged. Don't totally necrotic and gangrenous testes. Okay, take it from the internet again. Most of the patients are infected gangrenous. So if you go for orchidectomy, take a concern that you can have to put a testicular process the patient requires, but that's after six months when all this fibrosis has cleaned up. And also, you make a separate incision, high epigural incision or placement of testicular processes. Roll a manual detorsion again. A theoretical, if you ask me, I've never done a manual detorsion myself, I've never seen somebody do a manual detorsion in the past. Uh, when we had residents, we used to hear people saying fancy stories that they went to the foot of the patients, looked at their feet, looked at their balls in between the feet, and tried to gauge whether the torsion was from the clockwise, anti clockwise, anti clockwise, clockwise, and they manually detorted it the other way around. If it is anti clockwise, left side. If it's a clockwise, then they have to detour it in anti clockwise. The other side, anti clockwise, the right side, anti clockwise, all unscientific basis. I tell you what, all BS never have us ever had an opportunity to see such BS being done in front of me. Theoretical stuff. But again, from an examination point of view, you can tell that I will do a manual detorsion. Immediately, the patient has relief of the pain. I have manual detorsion. When I have the ultrasound Doppler at my behest in the emergency department, see there's return of blood supply. He you get assured, I am get assured, but not for life. He's still in the admission room. He's still being admitted and uh, scrotal exploration, which otherwise would have been emergency procedure has been turned into semi-emergency procedure. Manage the patient, do other tests, then take him to the OP after proper medical stabilization. Okay, that's very important because ultimately, you don't believe on this manual detox. Never, never believe in manual detox. Now, these are the difficult diagnosis. The four testicular appendages, non testis, and each can get detorted. Very, it can get detorted. And very important this is called the blue dot sign. Very difficult to see a blue dot in a black scrotum in our Indian population. But they're very well seen in the Western population. The most important thing you have to understand is they're mostly conservative. Okay, And if you have a chronic archaeologia due to repeated acute torsion, being detorted by itself when we are conservative and failing, then just go and excise the testicular appendage. Acute epididymal archive is the most common sign of differential diagnosis. There are two group of individuals. One is very young child, young child, young child on an elderly patients. Young child, phimosis, acute UTI, recurrent episodes, E. coli infection, epididymal archive. 
elderly patients, prostate issues, retained uh, urinary uh, post wide urine infection, cystitis, epididymal orchitis. Epididymal orchitis, as such, primary is, uh, is very rare. Only mumps orchitis used to be there in the past. Nowadays, mumps orchitis is very rare. But most of the infection of the epididymis, because epididymis is a good blood supply, epididymitis causing secondary epididymal orchitis. Chronic epididymal orchitis is most common with tuberculosis, but acute epididymal orchitis is remember to understand my video friends. For a sexually active 10 to 25 year old individual, it's mostly STIs, sexually transmitted infection. Commonest organisms are chlamydia trachomatis, tiponema pallidum, and an mycoplasma urolytica. While the other individuals, all bacteria, they have E. coli. As I said, young uh, child with a phimosis, recurrent UTI, or an elderly gentleman with a large prostate. Okay, so uh, these patients will have dysuria, frequency, urgency, urinary symptoms, gradual onset of pain, past history of chronic symptoms, no nausea, vomiting, feverish, mostly the feverish, and there's mixture of urethral discharge, acute epididymal orchitis. These are basically conservatively treated. Okay, friend sign positive means with scrotal elevation, the pain goes means giving ice packs, giving analgesics, giving and IV antibiotics. Okay, admit the patient for observation, put a scrotal support, a bike support, a scrotal underwear. Okay, tight underwear, elevate the scrotum and the pain goes off in time. The swelling goes off in time. Right, mom's orchitis had glandular swelling, parotitis, three to five days had pain in the testes. It's mom's orchitis, very common. A very common cause of infertility as well, but not found today. Okay, so these are the uh, points we actually discussed. We've got to skip all these things because mostly these are uh, bacterial prostatitis and seminal vesiculitis, all STIs, all STIs. And most of the patients will never say they have gone uh, they have an extra exposure whenever I tell them that I, I, I basically suspending an acute testicular torsion in any case. I'm going to take it to the patient, so I will take it to the OT, try to detour, uh, surgically detour, and see I will go for orchidectomy. Then they blurt out, no, I have a history of exposure. Okay, epididymocitis is proved, <laughs> but you have to correlate it with the ultrasound findings as well. So this is the diagnosis. Most of this have the positive urethral discharge. Very rarely we will have these other different diagnosis. Okay, we have persons being attacked on their balls. Mostly we protect our balls, but somehow all these things, really these accidents do happen. And we are shrieking in pain like this poor little gentleman. And mostly the, these are contusions, hematomas, which is conservative treatment, really just a rupture occurs and you have to go for surgical repair. Funius gangrene, again, a surgical residence nightmare because this is the, because whenever a surgical residence, when I'm doing internship, whenever uh, after my MBBS days, I was basically having all these cases to be done by my seat during the May emergency period. None of my seniors touched these patients and we were jolly happy doing these surgeries. So, and basically once you start to operate, do a, basically a, uh, to operate on a patient of funius ganglion, it's your becomes your duty lifelong to do regular dressings. Okay, so I think everybody has gone past to this settings. Well, all the, our friends are uh, doing internship. This is how a castle looking funius ganglion looks like. Diabetic induced uncontrolled diabetic. Not only antibiotic therapy, you have to go for surgical deployment. Okay, after proper stabilization, and it takes a lot of time. Acute, but the most important thing is can cause acute scrotal okay. pain. Testicular cancers rarely. Only when there is a hemorrhage within the tumor, these patients can have pain. These patients can have pain. As I said, referred pains, most important thing is a urolithiasis. A stone stuck in the lower ureter in the uterovesical junction. Referred pain in the ipsilateral scrotum, patient can have, can have nausea vomiting also. Ureteric colic with nausea vomiting. And often these stones are missed because they think of testicular torsion, epidermal but can understand it can be a case of uh, impacted ureteric stone. So fine, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So I think I've done, uh, I've given you a short treatise uh, of testicular torsion. It will help all my uh, friends who are going to give for exams as also all our, our members of the male health community, uh, online community uh, to understand that they must not neglect this acute total symptoms, okay? So if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel and like and share it with your friends and tell me in your chat section what is the next topic you want me to discuss with you okay with you come to my uh, group facebook group if you, although all of you have not uh, um, subscribed to physics it's basically free free resource and two please because i'm carrying on this uh, uh, health web talks 
So be a part of my web talks or community as well. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all. Be a part of my community and thank you for all your support. Bye bye. And